Hey, Gadfila, welcome to our live Q&A, October 21st, 2021. I'm excited to connect with you today. So let me just get this here, a few windows to open up. All right, greetings from Cusco. Oh, by the way, this is the microphone. This, this is what I should put on so you can hear me better. Let me know if you can hear me well. So if you're joining live right now, just hop on on the chat box and let me know if you can hear me well, if the sound is good. If not, I'm talking to myself. That would be really, really bad, wouldn't it? Let's see. It's just difficult to put on here today. Bop, 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 bop. All right. If you're here, then let me know in the chat box. And great. Thank you, Monica. Feedback. I love feedback. All right. So greetings from Cusco. Um, wherever you are, um, I'm actually having the heater on right now. I'm not sure if you can see this. You can see it there because it's pretty cold. We are up to uh, 3,400 meters above sea level right now. I'm in Cusco in Peru. And yeah, it's 100% uh, this is what you call alpaca, alpaca, 100% alpaca wool keeps me warm. And yeah, I'm so excited that you are here right now because what we're going to do today is, of course, we're going to answer your questions as much as possible. So if you haven't posted them yet in the chat box, then do it now. I prefer if you put three question marks in front of your question. So when a lot of people join, it makes it more easy to see what is a question and what is maybe just a comment or some sharing in um, among gut feelers, you know, in the chat box, because that often happens and that's good. Um, just so I see your question, put three question marks in front. And apart from answering your question, um, we're going to just in a moment, just take a moment to tune in together, to arrive here together as a community, but also for you to help you connect more with your gut feelings, because that's what the channel really is all about. It's all about helping you, empower you, that you connect more with your body. And by doing so, you actually become you become your own health expert. You start to source the answers from inside of you. So that's what we're going to do in the beginning. And then I'll do with you a little bit of the famous all ever happy ginger chewing. And we'll just shortly mention the benefits of doing that, of doing this weird spicy stuff, what you can expect from that. So it's like a little demo where you can laugh or do it together with me. And then we're going to go into a short thing about stomach rescue. I um, dedicated this live Q&A to especially the stomach. There was a, a video that came out about H. pylori, lots and lots of engagement, lots of questions if you haven't watched it yet. And stomach is atomic, atomic, stomach is atomic, stomach is a topic for you, then definitely, definitely tune into that. It's, um, it's on the channel so you can see it. If you're just joining, just say hi in the chat box so other gut feeler can greet you as well. And I greet you from Cusco in Peru. And yeah, after that, after talking a little bit about stomach acid, high stomach acid, low stomach acid, where's this acidity coming from, we hop into the live question. Hi, Pedro. Thank you for saying hi. <laughs> this is a name I can't pronounce. G-E-T-G-T-S? Hi, G-T-S. Okay, and you can also share if you want where you're watching from and maybe what's your what's your topic. So right now, what's what health symptom is up for you? Is it stomach issues? Is it H. pylori? Candida? Um, PMS, what is it? What is it? What is it is all about? Hi, Deborah. Deborah? Deborah? I always say this word, I say the name wrong, I think. Deborah. Deborah. Deborah? Okay. I'll do my best. <laughs> Daniela, make sure three question marks always in front of the question so I can see better what's going on. And that's actually a question, not just hi or makes it much more easier for me to, to when I'm scrolling through to find your question. Okay, sweet. So welcome again. Hi, TG. <laughs> cool. So let's get started with taking a moment to connect. Connecting as, as gut feelers together here where, from wherever you're joining, but also helping you connect to yourself, to your own gut feelings, to your body. So if you're just arriving here, one thing, not, don't just watch me. <laughs> Again, don't just watch me do it. So we're going to help the, the parasympathicus right now to get active and the sympathicus to relax more so you can, can become more present and feel more safe. And what you do is just you use your two hands and then you cross your arms. I hope this is okay with the microphone. You cross your arms and then I, I call this like self-cuddling. And you just wrap 
rub, 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 like what I'm doing right now. You just rub your arms a little bit. You can also close your eyes. Just do this. Relax the arms, just rubbing, a little bit of rubbing. What this does, it might seem like, what the, what the, mm, is Peggy doing? I thought we we're talking about live Q&A and stomach rescue. You're, that's helping because this is helping to activate the parasympathicus, which then allows you to digest foods better. If you're less stressed, if you're more present and you're more grounded, guess what? Your digestion works better. So doing that for a few more moments. Welcome, Diana, Diane, Monica, Chiara. So good that you're all here. Rehan, welcome. Sydney, Italy. So just continue with a little bit and then I'll demonstrate the standing as much as possible with the microphone. We do some crossing, um, just arms crossing. So you, with the microphone, you put one, one hand here across your shoulder and you just drag it on your body to your opposite hip. So left shoulder, right hip. Left, uh, right shoulder, crossing over. Can't do this with the microphone so well, but you know what I mean. And holding on right shoulder, left hip. Now just crossing a few times. Again, continue with that. Again, what that will, what that is doing is to help you relax a little bit. Maybe you had a stressful day or it's in the evening or just woke up just to become more present and to activate your parasympathicus and deactivate the sympathicus. Yeah, so doing that a few more moments, so crossing, just demonstrate it like that. And then if you're doing this, if you're a good gut feeder and you actually follow the instructions and can um, join me in this, let me know in the comments if you feel any difference, if you actually feel something. It works anyway, but some people already feel like more grounded or more, more connected with themselves. You know, you can also do this. It's easier for me to demonstrate this with the microphone. Just rubbing your arms, arm cuddling, self cuddling. Let me know if you feel any effects. You can also just press like that. Or I demonstrated this in another video about anxiety to help balance the energetic field of the body, which immediately has an effect on your physical health as well. Yeah, let me know if, if any of any changes occur. People that are here. Okay. And you can always continue doing this, you know, while you're listening. One of the affirmations that I like using with my clients and also sometimes with myself when I feel like Ooh, there's so much stress, the adrenals are, are firing, I feel a little bit uh, out of balance, is I do this and I say to myself, I am safe. That's it. It's so easy. I am safe. Just an affirmation. I am safe. Just continuing to saying that to yourself. I put that in the comment box. I am safe. Because it's all connected, you know, like one of the, <laughs> I find this really interesting because one of the, um, one of the uh, gut feelers recently commented on one of the videos. I think it was the gut healing meditation, which actually I had a client who said to me that it was amazing. That was a life changer for her. So that meditation is good, my friends. If you haven't watched it yet, the gut healing meditation is really good. It's 12 minutes long and it's so powerful. And one of the comments that I got from that, I got a lot of positive feedback, but also like, oh, what is this? And one of the things was, um, why are you do, like, I enjoyed your videos before, but now you're doing this esoteric stuff and I can't really, don't really know what to do with it. And yeah, it's too, you know, too, too esoteric for me. And yeah, totally accept it. Um, the thing about me is that I actually like that stuff. It's extremely powerful. And as we're talking about esoteric stuff, I'm doing a little bit of Paolo Santo. Let me know if you know this. It's a wood. It's rich in, in resin and that therefore it smells really good. It's very grounding, earthy and very cleansing. So I'm doing this right now for um, us together while you're seeing me smoking here. First time Peggy's smoking on the video. <laughs> We're smoking Paolo Santo. It's really good. When I wake up in the morning, I use it. It's very available here in Peru. You can basically buy like, you know, a kilo for $5 and you just need a little stick. 
And while we're doing a little bit of cleansing, I want to say some intentions that I have for our live Q&A here, why I'm doing this, so to be fully transparent. Um, first, of course, first, 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 of course, it's about answering your question, being here for you. Maybe you're not able to afford a one-on-one -on -one session or you just have this urgent burning question. So being really here for you, it's like a community service, you could say, for gut feelings. But it's also, and that's my main thing, it's not just about answering your question. What I really want to do here on the channel and with this live q and is, is to help you trust your body more. And maybe getting a glimpse or even certainty that you can transform your, your health challenges, whatever it is, whatever you're dealing with, for the better. You know, coming out of the darkness, like suffering with so much pain or whatever you're dealing with, maybe it's for, for weeks, maybe even for years. And to help you see, you not know, just take the supplement and take that food, that's good, you know, it's a good start. But the main thing really is all about helping you find the gift in the, in the darkness, you know, the gift in the struggle, because I truly, truly believe that our bodies are amazing and they are a way for us to grow. So all health challenges, they are not just there to punish us or to punish you, but they are there for being transformed and helping you to become more of who you want to be. Who, of who you are. So it's like an evolutionary tool. Lots of esoteric going on here. Let me know if you resonate. Paulo Santo <laughs> is done now. So we can move into, into ginger dewing. Who, who knows what ginger dewing is, guys? Ginger dewing. Have you ever done ginger dewing? Ginger dewing? Ginger dewing. Have you ever done ginger chewing? Oh, my dirty fingernails. Don't look at the, my fingernails. <laughs> ginger chewing? Exactly, Victoria. I like that. We need to believe in ourselves and it begins from within. Everything begins from within. 100% agreed. Ginger chewing. Let me know if you ever have done it. We're going to demonstrate it right now because I got good feedback people like when I bite into that ginger. So the way to do that is to take half your thumb size. So you look at your thumb. This is half of my thumb, más o menos. And you peel that thing, I already prepared. You peel the ginger. And then you throw the peel behind you for good luck. It's a joke. Just I'm just commenting on the esoteric, esoteric comment that I got on that video. I find that really funny. So um, here's the ginger and then you put it, it's not about, you know, sitting in front of the TV, watching Netflix and then like for two hours chewing the ginger, obviously not, it's hot, but it's really good for your stomach. It's um, great for balancing um, the, uh, balancing the stomach acid. So increasing good stomach acid, lowering the bad acids, which we're going to talk about just in just a second. Inflammation, any type of inflammation, wherever it is in your body, ginger will help. Um, pain relief, more powerful than penicillin or um, ibuprofen. It's the most powerful thing you can have, and it's good for your body. It can elevate gas and bloating, especially if you have gas and bloating after a meal. I had one of the comments from Farora, 11-2020. Um, if we have time, I'm going to come, to come to that comment on a recent video that she asked about pain, like relief after, after bloating, after eating. So that would be good before you eat something. So 15 minutes before doing some ginger chewing helps to stimulate the, um, the enzymes in the, in the stomach to get released also helps the liver. Um, it's very, very good for, for decramping. If you have, <laughs> if you have menstruational pain, anything like that, ginger works in 30, 30 not 30 seconds, 30 minutes maximum. It's so powerful and I can do it up to five times per day. So let's go to doing it. What is that? This is ginger, Kalina. Just talking about ginger chewing a little bit. Yeah, thank you, Victoria, <laughs> for enlightening our gut feeler. So we do it, ginger on one side, chew it quickly, and then you drink water immediately and just swallow the, the chewed piece. Don't just chew, uh, don't just swallow the whole thing. That's not, the idea is chewing it releasing the digestive enzymes, releasing the, sorry, releasing the enzymes that are in the ginger and the juice, and then mm, swallowing the thing, okay? Off we go. I can't talk while I'm chewing. That was a big piece though. Mm. 
Mm. Also helps with mental clarity. If you are coming to need to do a live Q&A for your community, doing ginger doing before also helps you with um, bringing more, more focus to everything because it lowers inflammation. Everything that lowers inflammation also helps with brain fog. So here we go. Have you done ginger doing? Let me know. If you've ever done it, you get a little award from me. Mm, sticks to your teeth, perfect. Oh, I'm going to drink a little bit more. Okay. If you have any questions, gut feeler, greetings from Cusco, Peru, uh, post them in the, in the chat box and put three question marks in front so I can easily identify what's a question and what's not a question. Stomach. Oh, nasal congestion, by the way. I, because I recently ate a little bit naughty stuff here. It's very tasty. Everything's so tasty here in Peru. So I wasn't uh, all on point. I ate a little bit of gluten and I can immediately, my sinus is like, Bleh. what helps? The answer is G-I-N-G-E-R, ginger, chewing. Okay. No, Diane, Diane. I heard that before. It's too strong for me. It's not too strong. It's never too strong. Like I had people with gastritis with all kinds of inflammation, with all kinds of pain. You first think it burns. Yes, it burns, but it's so good for your stomach. It's so good for your intestines. It's really warming. Give it a try. If that big piece that I just <laughs> swallowed or that chewed is too much, start with a little piece. But the raw ginger is the best because it has the alive enzymes. If you put hot water on top, ah, 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 kills a lot of the enzymes and some health benefits. Okay. Mm, nice. Everything, everything tastes better after ginger chewing. I love that. Isn't it great? Ginger. And it's cheap. It's so inexpensive. It's, it's not like a supplement. It's really like a powerful healing root. Okay. Let's talk about the stomach. Oh, thank you, Diane. She will give it a go. Good gut feeler. Good gut feeler. Let me know how it goes in one of the comments um, in the, of the videos. Okay, let's talk about stomach. Uh, about the stomach, I called it Stomach Rescue 101. Because the recent video, H. pylori, was like a big, apparently, a lot of gut feelers suffered from it. Maybe that's that's you as well, thinking, oh my, I have, do I have H. pylori or have stomach pain or indigestion, burping, gas? It's all connected to the stomach, right? Because it's the first the first organ really that happens after the mouth where all the food goes in. Yeah, it's often very stressed. Um, it's often very stressed and we don't pay much attention to it, um, especially stress, by the way, especially stress can cause, you know, stomach upset or indigestion. Because as we, as we talked about before, you know, with all this meditation stuff and relaxing, um, that is so important because when the sympathicus is active, you know, when the sympathy is in the stress hormone, the digestion doesn't work because the body is all about, oh, I have to run from the tiger, I have to fly, I have to fight and flight. You know, that's not the point when the body is like, oh, okay, relax. Gluco, 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 gluco. That's why some people, when they do meditation, you know, you do meditation in a group and after a few minutes, you hear everybody like, gluc, 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 gluc. that's the gastric acid. That's the gastric juices that start to flow because the relaxation, the parasympathicus has begun, has become active. Exciting, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Low stomach acid versus lots of acid. That's something that I think like, is the most central thing that I wanted to, to just, you know, rip on before we come to answering your question. Stomach acid. Most people have low stomach acid. It's not, if you have acidity coming up, acid reflux, gastritis, GERD, Barrett's esophagus, um, you know, indigestion, gas, having this heartburn. What this is about is not that you have too much good stomach acid. It's that you don't have enough good stomach acid. Right? You don't have enough good stomach acid because when you have good stomach acid, it keeps the bad acids in your, in your gut, uh, in your stomach that come from bacteria, that come from pathogens, that come from toxic heavy metals, inflammation. It keeps it at bay. It's the job of the of the good stomach acid. Yeah, and it's not the same as taking HCL supplements, by the way. If you have low stomach acid, forget about HCL supplements. I don't, this is the, the worst thing you can do because it imbalances your good stomach acid. Good stomach acid actually is a blend of different acids. It's not just one thing. And it's very, 
um, unique to your own body. So you can't really replace that stomach acid with HCL supplements, which are just one type of, of stomach acid and which create an imbalance in, this gast in these gastric juices. And when you understand that the, the good stomach acid is important and that you don't have enough when you have symptoms, when you have gastritis, heartburn, acid reflux, you know, H. pylori, overgrowing the stomach, it's because there is too much bad acid. It flourishes. It comes from pathogenic bacteria that are excreting bad acid that are very inflammatory for your body. Ginger, 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 ginger doing. <laughs> Works. Um, so, so that's one thing that you can do. And it, it's so important to understand because then you also understand why PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, or acid blockers, why they, or antibiotics, why they mess up your body so much, why they mess up your stomach and they give you short-term relief or people that tell me like, oh, I'm taking baking soda, one teaspoon every morning. I'm like, ah, <laughs> it neutralizes your good stomach acid and it actually makes the bad acid and the, the cause for the bad acid, which is bacterial or heavy metals or even viruses, makes them flourish, makes them like, oh, yeah, chill out, nice, hang out, good hangout place because they feel comfortable there. The, the lower your stomach acid, your good stomach acid is. Does it make sense? Let me know. Uh, by the way, guys, any questions? Three question marks in front, please. Um, so I know it's, it's a question and I can see it more easily. Um, a few things just before we come to your question that you can do when you're dealing with low stomach acid, when you deal with any stomach um, issues really, have some here. What's that? What's this green thing here? What is it? I'm not going to continue until somebody tells me. Okay, gut feeler, what's it? What is this? Yes, mind and soul. Thank you so much. This is aloe vera, Monica. Exactly, aloe vera. What would I'm doing with this aloe vera here? Aloe vera, amazing. So you cut about this size. And then you peel it, though not the green thing, just the slimy thing in the middle that tastes and looks like a snail, really. Um, put that in a blender with a little bit of water, blend it up and drink it. It's the best, it's the best thing. It's like a, you know, when you have a wound and you put a put something good on it, that's what happens with aloe vera as well in your stomach. So it heals any scars that you have from um, antibiotics or from the gastritis, from the, the bad acid from the bacteria that can burn wounds in the stomach and cause ulcers, aloe vera. Can't overdose it, get it fresh or buy the, the one in the glass bottle, which is 100% aloe vera. So it shouldn't contain any citric acid if you buy it as a supplement and fresh and liquid is always better, okay? Aloe vera, aloe vera. Now everybody says aloe vera, Chiara. <laughs> very good, very good. So. Aloe vera is one of my favorite ones. Also, really important, um, low fat, low protein. Any stomach issues, any gut issues. The only fat really that is really good is not coconut oil. Somebody asked about coconut oil. Coconut oil for your poor stomach. Um, the thing with the whole oil thing, oil and fats and protein, your stomach is impaired, you know, or your gut is impaired or mostly both. And you have... You know, not enough bile production, which digests fat. You have maybe, you know, impaired adrenaline, uh, impaired kidneys. This is all, it all belongs together. And if you don't have enough gastric juices, it's very hard to digest protein. If your liver is overburdened, which usually comes together, then you can't digest fats well. What happens if you can't digest those foods? Yes, they make you feel full and maybe grounded. Um, but if you can't digest them, they start rottening later on in the gut. They produce a gas, it's called ammonia. It's a toxic gas that is actually behind this leaky gut and IBS symptoms, so, symptoms <laughs> that can penetrate the cells. Every cell in your body can go up to your brain, inflame your brain, nervous system, and get all kinds of issues. And most of all, it's extremely inflammatory. So having gut rot um, is the worst thing you can have. And that comes together with malabsorption, with gas, with bloating, you know, with the usual symptoms, pain. Um, in the body. So that's why low fat, low protein is so important. And especially if you are incorporating more easy digestible foods like fruits, vegetables, vegetable juices, if leafy greens are too much, 
then you know potatoes just go just eat more potatoes the life life would be better if it would have more potatoes sweet potatoes carrots are extremely good for the stomach cooked carrots raw carrot juice extremely good they have um phytochemicals phytochemical components that are uh, inhibit the growth of unfriendly bacteria like h pylori like um, resistant strains of strap like echerichia coli and later on also viruses in the in the digestive tract um, epstein barr for example so that's extremely extremely good when you do these things um, if you want to incorporate any fat i highly recommend to do that more afternoon evening and natural foods so oil is not a natural food it's a hundred percent um, processed food and it's 100% fat. It doesn't exist anywhere in nature. Coconut is um, a nut that has coconut meat, it has coconut water, and this is extracted coconut oil. So that's not the same, same with olives. I recommend avocado, not avocado oil, avocado if you need some grounding, if you have a lot of anxiety going on, need some grounding, you just say, oh, Peggy, I need something to feel full, I don't want to lose any more weight. Potatoes and avocado and some herbs, like here. I have my little, you know, I don't have flowers in my house. I just <laughs> have herbs so I can sit there and then I'm easily, you know, eating my parsley. Very anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antibacterial, extremely good for your liver. Cleansing, parsley, liver, mm. they are lovers. Okay, so those are some things that you can do. Um, avoid coffee by any means. If you have any stomach issues, alcohol is a no-go. So I think somebody asked, one gut feeler asks here if I should take ginger before alcohol or before red wine, just skip that red wine. Like honestly, alcohol, red wine included, grape juice is great, red grape juice. But alcohol in any form, in a tincture form, in a supplement, in kombucha, in fermented foods, is toxic for your body. Your nervous system gets inflamed. Your, your liver will stop anything because that's the job of the liver, stops anything to deal with that poison first. You know, it's not detoxing that moment. It's not going to produce any healthy protein for you, synthesize that, nothing. It's just going to stop and detoxify the, the, the alcohol. It also alcohol, because it's so toxic, draws out nutrients from your body. It's very, very, very unsmart to take any type of alcohol if you're a smart gut feeder. Just... Find something else. Be like a beacon of light and be the one who at the party starts with cat's claw tea or with something. You know, there are so many alternative drinks that you can that you can do and inspire others to, to join you. Okay, good. Talked a lot about that. Um, let's see what the gut feeler questions are about. Okay, let's jump in. Hi, if you're just joining, um, welcome to the live Q&A, October 21st, 2021. We talked a little bit about ginger chewing. We did a, a mini meditation or like something with this rubbing here and talked about aloe vera, did some Paolo Santo, some esoteric stuff because I like it. I really like the esoteric stuff. Energy is extremely powerful and it's part of, of healing. So it's not just what you eat. It's also what you think and what you feel that has a huge impact on, especially on the stomach and on gut health in general. Okay. Now, see, there we go. T.G. Hoff, kombucha gave me the worst GERD attack ever. There you go. And even if you don't have any symptoms from, you know, foods that contain alcohol, the liver remembers everything, holding the parsley, <laughs> the sacred parsley. And um, the liver remembers anything. And often it's just a, uh, a question of time. You know, when does the liver say like, it's enough, you know, it's just, a, it's just a matter of time, no matter who we're talking about, you know, all, everybody is just taxing their liver with what they're eating, almost everybody. And even if you're eating the healthiest diet ever, you still have stress, you still have, you know, like environmental toxins that you can't, you know, protect yourself from. And that's why it's so important to really look at being nice to your body. Don't drink alcohol, even if you're healthy. It's just not a nice thing. You need more clear people on the planet, more people who are able to, you know, like inspire other people and hold their, hold their body as sacred temples. That was esoteric, sacred temples. Okay. Okay. Let's see. 
Do, 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 do. Oh, by the way, we're going to do, a f if I have time for that, I wanted to do a little bit about B12. If you have any questions about B12 supplement or in general B12, please post them in the, in the question box because I think this is a topic that at least I got a few questions from, um, you know, how, what about, wh how do I know if I have enough B12, how much B12, um, should I take it every day? Um, am I overdosing? Should I eat more meat as a vegan? Da, 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 da. If any of those resonate with you guys, if you have B12 questions, post them. And I will do a little bit of a B12, B12 excursion if we still have time. I also want to answer some live questions. Da, da, da. By the way, if you have an urgent question and you don't get it, you feel like, yeah, I'm not seen, I'm not answered, use the super chat button. That makes you stick out and it also supports the channel. Okay. Diana, Diane, sorry. I'm very sensitive to magnesium supplements. It makes me very drowsy and depressed. Can you shed some light on this issue? Yeah. Of course, magnesium um, is a very powerful mineral that is very abundant usually in the body. And that is, for example, abundant in my friend already, <laughs> uh, parsley. In very uh, lots of greens, you have magnesium. And the magnesium supplements, most of them, they are trash because they create an imbalance in your body um, for your neurological function, B12, uh, B12, <laughs> yeah, B12 as well. But magnesium is extremely important. What can happen with this whole magnesium supplement, you can actually set off your, your good stomach acid, for example, you can alkalize it too much. Um, B12 um, magnesium is very alkalizing for the body. And if it's the wrong, you know, if it's, first of all, if it's not needed for your body or if it's the wrong kind, you know, if you take like a magnesium dioxide or something like that, that just clogs up your liver, um, creates, might create stones, you know, kidney stones, liver stones, that can just imbalance the whole thing because the body naturally has, you know, a very sensitive balance of minerals, of vitamins, of how it works with um, also with neurotransmitters, for example, um, magnesium actually affects your, um, your neurotransmitters, how they, how they communicate with each other, your neurons. So it's, it's really important to pay attention to the symptoms that you have, if you have drowsiness from taking um, magnesium it might not be the right magnesium or not in the right form or not the right moment you take it so um, yeah that would be the let me know if that helps the answer but yeah mood mood is very connected to magnesium you know it's depression drowsiness might be not the right mind right one or too much of it or create an imbalance in the body or all of that Oh, if you if you um, if you um, got feelers about candida and yeast infection, so I've been in, this is mind and soul. I've been dealing with a yeast infection for years, and for the last two months, I've been taking Microseal, like you suggested, clean diet, not seeing results. Should I stick with it? Is the question should you stick with the supplement? Um, I wouldn't take more than one of the bottles of Microseal. Um, so if you don't see a result from that don't buy it again. Um, and candida, candida yeast infection. No, noise is coming. Candida yeast infection, just in case somebody forgot for you, of, of you, candida and yeast, they are all about balancing the body. So candida is not the culprit. Candida is not a bad one. Um, because often like, oh, I have this yeast infection, the yeast overgrowth. Um, yeah, that's a sign, that's a symptom. For, sorry for the noise, um, that's a symptom for that something else is going on, that candida takes care of, for example, viral debris of bacteria, toxic, toxic um, excretion of bacteria, which is talked about with the low stomach acid issue. Um, so, so candida is really like more like, a, like a, a waste dump, you could say, or like a, how do you call it, like a bin, a bin. Of course, it's not nice, you know, I have like your whole house full of bins or of trash, um, trash cans, that's not nice, but it would be worse if the whole trash would be all over your house without a bin, right? So I think that's a good, 
good way to see candida. So if the if you're doing all this stuff for candida and it's not moving, then you've got to look somewhere else or like deeper, deeper in into the whole issue. Candida also, especially for women, I'm not sure if mind and soul is a woman. Um, and who was the else? High vibe in Heidi is probably a woman. If you don't see any improvements, looking into any types of, you know, how, how can you relax more? How can you bring out less stress in the body? Because when the body is stressed, the immune system is lower. The digestion doesn't work so well. And hormones of stress like adrenaline get excreted and they inflame your body and your system more. So any type, especially with candida yeast overgrowth, anything, if you're already eating a clean diet and stuff, you know, not starting with don't eat dairy for, <laughs> if you want to get rid of candida, that's like a, taking that as a baseline. Um, if you don't see any results, looking into how can you relax yourself more? How can you maybe do more of this esoteric stuff, you know, more of stuff that releases any kinds of stress, or especially emotional, especially emotional stress. If, um, if a breakup was there, if there's some, you know, some insecurities, looking at that, helping like self-love. With Candida, self-love is a lot, is a very precious one. And taking, like during the day, taking moments where you just tune into yourself, you allow yourself to feel whatever is there. Maybe do some of this. Um, just focusing, like not being too hard on yourself. You know, oh, I ate this chocolate bar right now. Oh, my Candida gets worse. Like love it. When you eat the bad stuff, just, you know, love yourself for it. It's hard. It's intense enough being human, but if we judge ourselves from whatever we're dealing, it just gets worse. So like cultivating this, this self-love and there are ways to do it. You know, we talk a lot about on the channel, um, how to cultivate self-love, self-compassion, meditation, things like that. Just being nice to yourself. You know, we are hard enough to ourselves. Okay, I'm starting to ramble because I think this is a really interesting, um, really important topic as well. Oh, can you still hear me with the microphone? Could just hold it like Michael Jackson. <laughs> I really like Michael Jackson, by the way. I just really love this guy. Um, not physically, but like how how much he helped the world. Like it's so inspiring, and the the energy he has, like this purity, is so heart touching. It's I love it. Personal rant. Moving on. Carolina, Caroline, Glasius Nieborg. What a nice name. What would be the best advice for bloating, SIBO, and candida? I get brain fog from most of the foods. Yeah, so brain fog, which, which I just, um, just scraped on it just before. Brain fog, if you're dealing with brain fog, digestion is essential. Because what brain fog really is about is about inflammation. Where does the inflammation come from? Likely from indigestion, because when there are more causes for it, toxic heavy metals are another one that also cause inflammation in the brain. Um, but one of the things that is essential connected with the digestion is what we talked about just in a second before, just in a moment before, is this indigestion. When the foods are not getting broken down, high protein, high, high fat, for example, most of those, um, they start to rot in the gut. You know, it's just like when you go into a pigsty. I'm not sure if you can occasionally walk through a pigsty. Um, but if you go there, you have this stinging smell, like this really, it's a, it's a toxic gas that inflames your nervous system. Like it can travel anywhere and cause pain. SIBO, you know, like SIBO, <laughs> SIBO, there's so much more to SIBO. It's not just bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine. It's everywhere. You know, there's everywhere inflammation. So what can you do with that um, apart from, you know, like the basics? I'm not sure if the basics are, if you know the basics, like avoiding trigger foods that feed pathogens and viruses and, you know, streptococcus, for example, which is key for SIBO, resistant strains of strep, maybe from antibiotics, maybe from toxic heavy metals, um, got them triggered. So what you want to look into is like helping your body to absorb foods better. So watching some of the videos from Peggy from malabsorption, for example, um, or foods to not eat. And 
yeah, if you get brain fog for most foods, that means that there's something something else to look into. Um, one of the things that I would like to you know just mention because we we talked about it before um, is B12. And our liquid form of B12 that consists of adenosyl and methylcobalamin without alcohol. I have a link for that as well um, from Global Healing Center, which is the best supplement brand you can find. Um, helping that helps a lot with with digestion helps also with with neurological functions because the adrenal um, adenosyl cobalamin which is a, a form of b12 a very active form helps your adrenals it helps your nervous system it helps your liver um, so that's something you can you can incorporate then lowering the stress as well so there might be a lot of things that are going on and often it's not just one answer but i hope i gave you something to <laughs> something to chew on ginger yeah, ginger would be something if you're not doing it already, Caroline. Bringing ginger chewing into your daily, into your daily life. So having like the, the 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 scoop of ginger, you know, like from half thumb size, eating that 15 minutes before a meal, chewing, swallowing, three times a day if you have three meals per day, and that will already help. Why are you waiting for the 15 minutes doing relaxation stuff, doing things that connect you more with your gut feelings that help you lower stress, doing the yoga moves if you want to. You know, I hate yoga, but it's really good for the body. Um, things like that. Everything that helps you to calm down before you eat anything will immensely help you with candida bloating and SIBO. Okay, let me know if that helps. Mm -hmm. Oh, the B12 question started. Great. Okay. okay. Again, if you have any questions, post it three question marks in front of the question and then the question. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, let's talk about B12. There are a few questions about, as a vegan, do I need B12 every day? Will the B12 be absorbed if one has stomach issues? Really good questions here. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about B12. Um, we start. One of the questions that one of the Instagram, Instagram got from Amy had a, had a question that might be, some of you might have the same question. And that is about, methyl and adenosyl cobalamin and the third component that is kind of new on the market <laughs> um, that is hydro hydroxo cobalamin hydroxo cobalamin and if i recommend that or should you just take the two so it's enough if you have a supplement that contains the, both of them like adenosyl and methyl cobalamin that's enough if you have the triple the triple um, triple component with the good B12, so not with um, cyanocobalamin, which is really bad and synthetic and your body can't do anything with it, but be, it's actually toxic. If you have that, the good thing it do, does, the, the third component, hydroxocobalamin, is it slows the absorption down and actually give you, give you like longer over during the day, longer like a, a reserve, like a, a support from B12. So it, it just helps you like last, give you lasting Lasting support, it's not toxic. It's also a bioavailable form, um, but it's not essential. Like the essential ones are methyl and adenosylcobalamin. Okay. So here's the link. I posted the link. Uh, you can check that out. Um, you also get 10% discount because I'm working together with a global healing center. I love their products. They put a lot of a lot of thought, they are not just capitalistic, you know, they put a lot of thought into their brand. It's, I have a lot of things that I recommend from them, not all of them. Some are just like, yeah, not as good. Um, but MicroSeal, for example, for Candida is another one. Okay, cool. Thank you, Caroline, for the feedback. You want to try the piece of ginger before meals. That's amazing. Lemon ginger juice is also really good, these shots. That's also really cool because lemon, for example, stimulates the liver you know, and helps with improving your stomach acid as well. Okay, so that was Amy's question. Um, what are the other questions? The vegan. The vegan question with the B12. Do I need B12 if I'm vegan? Well, the answer is everybody needs B12. 
We all need B12 um, because with what we're dealing right now, most of us are in this constant fight and flight mode. The more you have of that, the lower your digestion, the more your adrenals are stressed. So extremely, it's extremely important. Um, it also helps with the formation of red blood cells. Yeah, so B12 is essential for that. Helps to, if you have more red blood cells, more good red blood cells, they can carry more oxygen to your brain and to your inner organs. And guess what? They work better. You know, because oxygen is the currency in your body. That's why these breathing techniques and Wim Hof and you know, conscious breathing, why this is so powerful because oxygen is antiviral. You know, antiviral, antibacterial, it's, not, it's the best thing you can have. I'm not saying you hyperventilate the whole day, but you know, like having things that increase the oxygen, the oxygen transport to your, to your inner organs is vital. And B12 is one of them because it supports the, the formation of, of red blood cells. Um, another thing that I like about B12 and why it's so essential is for sleeping. It, it uh, really helps with, with the sleep waking cycle, especially if you're somebody who sleeps late and goes to bed really late or wakes up really late and is just like completely off or doesn't sleep well through, through the night because of your symptoms. So that's something. Also helps with the, with the uh, release of melatonin, which is the sleep hormone. Um, which a lot of us are not having enough. Brain and mental health, very important. We talked about that a lot. Um, helps balancing moods. It's really good for menstruation problems as well. There's just so much. Like B12 is so essential. And the thing about B12 and the whole, you know, eat more pork, just eat more pork when people have come back with their, with their B12 results and like, oh, Peggy, the doctor said I should eat more liver, you know, because the, the poor pork or whatever animal has some liver, has some B12 in it. Here's the most important thing. And this is also why most of the B12 supplements suck and why it's not good if you're a vegan to just eat liver, why this is not going to change anything. At first, the, the blood test that you do from B12, forget about them. Just skip it. Just don't do it because they are not accurate. Why are they not accurate? Because if you have a lot of B12 swimming around in your bloodstream, that doesn't mean that it gets absorbed. It actually can be a sign of a major B12 deficiency, especially if you're eating a lot of you know, B12 stuff, B12 supplements, cobalamin or um, liver or things like that. If they don't get absorbed into the, into the body, they're just swimming around in the bloodstream. And then the test results show like, oh, you have high B12, everything's well. But your inner organs, your neurons, they're super deficient because that form of B12 doesn't enter the cell. No, so because who 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 creates B12 in the first place? Question for you, gut feeler. Let's be watching right now. Test question to stay alive during the live Q and A. Who creates B12? Who makes that B12? Is it the pork? Is it the human? Or what is it? Think about it. Do, do, do. Post it in the comments below. If not, I'm not continuing. We do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's produced in the. That's that's smart. It's produced in the end part of the, uh, of the ileum, which is the small intestine. That's true. But who produces it? Who produces it? Who produces B12? It's not your body. Nope. It's not the pork. Nope. It's bacteria. Bacteria. Our best friend, hand disinfectant viruses. Bacteria. Good bacteria. Good, uh, good um, bacteria from your microbiome. And guess what? The, the bacteria in the pork and the bacteria in your body that produce B12 are not the same. Because bacteria is very, um, is very specific to the organism. And the B12 that is produced from these good gut bacteria is not the same from the pork and from your body. This is why you can take as much B12 from the pork through eating liver if you absorb it at all because of your stomach acid, but it doesn't, it doesn't do anything good for your body. You might have this blood test which says, I have good B12, you know, I'm good, I'm not vegan or I'm vegan, um, but it doesn't get absorbed, you know, it doesn't get absorbed. And that's why adenosine and methylcobalamin, which are high bioavailable, B12s, why they get absorbed even if you have stomach issues, even if you have low stomach acid, because it gets absorbed straight in the mouth. Yeah, so this is how it looks like that stuff. It's red, 
it doesn't have any, it's red, like that's, that's natural color. It doesn't have any colors or flavors or anything. You put it on the, a little bit more, I already took my, you put it under the tongue, leave it there for 15 seconds or 30 if you're really smart. And it gets absorbed immediately through the bloodstream. It immediately gets absorbed. So it doesn't even have to wait, be broken down. There's no fiber in it. It gets immediately absorbed. So even if you have low stomach acid, um, which comes together with low intrinsic factor, which intrinsic factor protects the B12 in your stomach, um, even then you can get your B12 if you lose the liquid form without alcohol, med adenosyl, and methylcobalamin. Yeah, bacteria, huh? Kalina, extremely cool. Yeah, I know. And of course, Diane, in the soil, there is as well bacteria. Oh, there's some coffee talk going on. Okay, let me see if there's anything more. So how much B12 should you take? Um, is, you know, how do I know if I have enough B12? It's very hard to know, but if you have, you know, symptoms like tiredness, if you have chronic illnesses, if you have brain fog, if you have liver, liver impaired, if you don't sleep well, if you want some energy boost, just the B12, it, it's just good for your body. If you have, if you take enough of this, uh, too, too much of the B12, all it does is, is you might get a little bit of, of diarrhea or you might feel like, oh, oh, I have a lot of energy, a bit too much, but it doesn't harm the body. It's, it's way too expensive to overdose it, to be honest, way too expensive, the good stuff. So if you just take one milliliter, which is about, you know, like the stuff that comes out with one dropper, from the one that I recommend, it's enough. Once per day is enough. In times of when you feel really stressed, you have a lot of emotional hardship or very physical, um, you know, lots of physical stuff going on. If you take it twice, once in the morning, once in early afternoon, that's good. You know, but one time per day, I would recommend that to everybody on the planet. You know, there are we are B12 deficient just because of how we live. And unless you live in, the Peru, in Peru here somewhere in the jungle and just eat... You know, I don't know, fruit and vegetables and lots of potatoes all day and maybe some apaca sheep. I don't know. Apaca is not a sheep. Is it a sheep? I don't know. Apaca meat. Um, then it might be different. But for most people, for us watching who have internet, uh, we'll probably need a lot of B12. <laughs> okay. Okay. Again, the link for the B12 that I recommend is, is in the chat box. You can see it. I posted it a while ago. Okay. Lots more questions. <laughs> Let me see. if I, I think I can get one more in. So already one hour in. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Up. Hinaf, Kauhihak, Kaushik. I'm so bad in pronouncing names. Um, what, what should I do about the tightness in the right side, the right side of the stomach? I do have on and off constipation. Constipation makes the discomfort worse. Yeah, of course, I understand. Um, so again, anything you can do to be nice to your stomach, all the things that we just talked about, are good. Um, ginger, my friend. This is a ginger advertisement for the ginger industry, the pharma industry of ginger. Um, ginger would help with the, with the pain, you know, with this discomfort because it's anti-cramping as well. So whatever is going on there in your stomach um, can help to just relax everything, you know, warming it, lowering the inflammation. If you have discomfort, there's also inflammation going on. So start with this 15 minutes um, that I also recommended to Diane with this 15 minutes of ginger chewing every day before 15 minutes. 15 minutes before, not 15 minutes chewing, 15 minutes before the meal, three times per day, up to five times if you want more and see the, the difference. And also before eating, really important, you know, be nice to yourself. You can even hold your, your stomach, put your hand there and just um, connect with, you know, connect with the, with the organ. Your hands, they are energy. There's a plus pole and a minus pole in your hands. Esoteric, ooh. It's still esoteric, but it's really not. If you, if you, you know, if you just experience your hands are the most powerful healing tool you have, apart from 
your your consciousness, you know, really, and food. Um, by just connecting with the organ and just sending, you know, you don't even have to do anything. You just hold the hands there. You can increase it by sending love and relaxation and support to the to the organ, but you don't have to. Sorry, I was learning it to the liver. So to the center, your center is in the stomach. Um, the uh, your right side is also your liver. You know, there might be something with your bile and the gallbladder also going on, but they belong to each other. So they're really... Um, they really support each other. If there's something going on with the stomach, it also impacts the liver because the liver then tries to, you know, cope with it, cope with the low stomach acid, with the bad digestion um, and produce more bile and bile and it's exhausting. So that's how the body works. It's not just, you know, not like a car, just take off the tire and put a new tire on. It's like looking at the whole body as an intelligent organism. That's what it is. Um, and the best way to do that is by connecting you know, really connecting to your intuition and your gut feelings and being nicer to yourself. Nicer to yourself. Okay, gut feelers, uh, thank you very much for the donation, Kalina. Appreciate it. I appreciated you, um, gut feeder, who was watching today. I thank you for, you know, taking the time out of your day today. Hope this was helpful. I'd love to hear, you know, what you take away. If you have a, a moment more, just letting me know in the comments if you're watching a replay or live in the chat box what you're taking away from, from this today. And yeah, maybe, maybe just one thing, you know, one thing that inspired you or that um, you feel like, oh, I have to think about that. Or maybe some of the healing foods that you want to include. I would love to, would love to hear from you. Sending you greetings from Cusco. Do well, connect more with your body. And I'm looking forward to, to yeah, connecting with you next time live. And if you haven't watched the H. Polori video yet, go over there and do it now. It's a really nice video. I like it. I put a lot of love and um, I would say effort, love and dedication into it. And it's very, very helpful. Lots of gut feeder gave good feedback. And, and yeah, if you have, by the way, if you ever, you know, have a question and like a topic where you're not sure like what to do, just put on, on the YouTube search bar gut feelings or my name, Peggy, and the topic, and you will see likely <laughs> I already made a video about it because it's almost 400 videos now. On gut feelings so we um we cover a lot of ground next video that's going to come out probably on monday because monday is our our day for publication will be on ginkgo 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 it's a tree very powerful tree and the free magic benefits that i experienced myself as well it's a powerful tree and um, yeah videos coming out on monday next monday bye guys <laughs> Let me know what you take away from it if you haven't done it yet, okay? Mm -hmm.